<laughs> Good evening, welcome to Monster Chiller Thriller 8. Yes, this is the 8th episode of my Halloween episode. Let's get that thing off, it's so freaking hot. Alright, so uh, yes, episode number 8 of the Monster Chiller Thriller Wine. And... Um, I almost didn't do this one. Uh, it is October, well actually I guess it's October 15th technically right now, right? Uh, yeah? Where's my calendar on this thing? I got a new iPad uh, a month ago. There it is. Yeah, it's the 15th. It's a Sunday. It's past midnight. It's one in the morning as I always do this late at night. But uh, not that it matters to you, but anyway, um, well no, we don't want that. Bam. Alright, so anyway. Um, I don't even think I'm going to use this thing. <laughs> so welcome to uh, the eighth episode of the uh, of the show. And uh, this is actually the first time... Oh, I probably should turn that around. This is the first time that um, I've... Hello, Horatio. How are you today? Um, first time I've actually had bottles supplied to me for Halloween. And um, it took eight years to do that. But hey, I'm getting lots of samples recently. So I'm loving, loving the sample life. So if you have samples to send me... Uh, feel free to do it because um, it's great. Uh, anyway, so I had someone reach out to me and said, hey, we think Halloween and ports go great. And I was like, well, I like port. Um, I just did a whole bunch of port at work um, a couple months ago and um, just really kind of found some cool stuff. I mean, it's basic stuff. I, ain't like, I mean, I've also had some really cool stuff, not from work, but outside of work. But um, I would say the past couple months, I've really uh, fortified wine in general. I've had some really cool stuff. Um, we got some sherries, really, really basic, uh, inexpensive sherries that um, I was playing around with. But, um, so they sent me some stuff and they said, we've got some food pairings or actually candy pairings to go with it. Because, you know, Halloween, it's not just for kids. Any adults should have some fun too. So let's have some wine, let's have some cool candy. And um, let's just do it. Um, like I said, this is October 15th, which means later today, as in around 5-ish in the afternoon, so um, 16 hours from now, I'll be on a plane to Burgundy, but by the time you see this, I will be probably hanging out in, let's see, the 24th, I'll be hanging out in Chablis, um, so that'll be fun, then uh, Beaujolais, then be coming back home. So, so assuming everything goes well, I uploaded this on the 24th. Um, because I didn't think coming back and then trying to record it, which I would have no time to do, um, and then trying to get it up on the 30th, not really a lot of time. So we'll get a full week or so, two weeks I guess really, of uh, some fun Halloween stuff um, going on. So um, let's just get into it. So first of all, this was um, all three wines were donated by Michelle Keen of Calhoun and Company Communications out of Sacramento. Uh, I'm sorry, out of San Francisco on Sacramento Street, uh, San Francisco, California. Um, and let's just bring it up again. Uh, not again, but I, I haven't even brought up it because I haven't recorded anything. So besides the, all the hurricanes that have happened, you know, the Texas and Florida and Puerto Rico and, and then a little bit into like the central Gulf Coast and all that, um, which, you know, I do hope that everyone is uh, doing as best they can. Um, I know... Uh, at least Harvey in the Houston area, that's the closest to me. And I drove through that uh, area several weeks afterwards and we saw tons of, my father and I saw tons of uh, of uh, just debris or, or just trash or junk, whatever you want to call it, on the side of the road, really east of Houston. They just had piles and piles and you know, church pews and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, and just everywhere, just seeing that, um, my heart's out to everybody out there. And uh, if you have a few dollars to spare, you know, feel free to donate to your charity of choice uh, for the hurricane relief and also for the wildfires out in California. Um, luckily, the, the, the wineries that I have visited uh, the last time in, in Napa, none of them have been destroyed, but some of them had a little bit of damage and there's obviously some uh, vineyard damage and lots of people have lost their houses and we've had some people lose their lives so again out there. So uh, being in the wine industry helps a little bit closer to home on that one. But um, so my heart is out to all of them uh, the past couple of months, all the disasters happening. Um, so let's get into uh, the wines. So first of all, um, uh, oh, I've got these in kind of reverse order from my, I'm actually doing them. 
boom, boom, and boom. I've, uh, we're gonna start with the tawny port. Now I would normally have a tawny port at the end, but the way they had put them in order, and not that it has to be exactly in this order, but they kind of put them in, in a different order, and it kind of makes a little more sense as far as lighter body to full body. Um, but, uh, so we're gonna do first the wares, uh, Otima, I can see if I said Optima. Otima, 10 year old tawny port. Now, first, real quick, what is a 10 year old tawny port? Um, it doesn't mean that all the wines are 10 years old or, or the wine that's used in it is minimum 10 or average 10 years. It's kind of a weird thing. All they have to do is make sure it tastes like a 10 year tawny port. That's all you got to do. I, I'm not saying they've got two year old wines in there. Um, but 10, 20, 30, 40, the only regulation they really have about the age indication is it has to taste like it. Um, so they could have younger or older wines in there just as long as they all taste the way it should. Um, anyway, so Wares was founded in 1670. It was the first British port company established in Portugal uh, and therefore the pioneer of a great tradition. This is the marketing speak. Um, history is synonymous with that of port itself. Uh, they are distinguished for their uh, wares, ports are distinguished for their structure, power, and softly perfumed nose, uh, and have a particularly fresh and elegant style. Um, and these, oh, I'm sorry, it's, I'm, I am, I am kind of tired. Um, these wines are sourced from the Quinta de Cavadina and the Quinta do Retiro Antigo um, uh, estates uh, in the Douro Valley. And uh, yeah. A suggested retail price of $26 on this, and this is, I believe, a $375. I don't want to tip it too much to see how it probably is a $375. Um, so a half bottle. But anyway, I'm trying to see if I can see on the back here. Well, oh, it's got to be on here somewhere. Oh, 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 and so $500. Ah, three-quarter bottle, 500 milliliter. So um, it's kind of a cool bottle. I mean, it's like more like a regular like wine bottle rather than like these dark, you know, black port bottles. Um, so let's check it out. Now, um, before we get into the food pairing, we're just going to do the, the wine itself. Tawny ports in general, so they've, uh, they've done a lot of aging in oak barrels, and because of that, they have done what's called a um, oxidative aging. So that really means that eventually they, they get these like uh, nutty type of um, uh, aromas and flavors and tawny as in the color, that's where we get the word tawny from. The wine turns, you know, tawny or brown, really, more and more brown. So um, let's check it out. So it's got really this um, faint nutty aroma. Um, very sweet like a candied nut type of thing, like a candy pecan, walnuts. And then um, kind of a, an old musty, not, not, in a, not in a bad way, like, you know, um, um, cork taint or anything like that, or, or, or brett or any of these, you know, things that could be considered faults. But just kind of like a, like I walked into an attic, a um, little bit of caramel, Yeah, so mostly a, a nutty aroma, but we got extra other flavors or sorry, other aromas like caramel, uh, a little mustiness, a um, little dust. Yeah. Let's try, let's try it, man. And no spit cups. I mean, it's over there just so I can, you know, brand it out. So with this one, the nutty flavor is totally there. It's like really fresh. Um, it's like I really just grabbed a bunch of like walnuts and pecans and just just you know stuff stuff my mouth with them. Um, and and somewhat candied. I mean, there's definitely a sweetness to it. Um, if you didn't know, port is um, port is uh, fortified um, during fermentation. 
um, to stop to stop the fermentation, but so you can retain the uh, sugar levels. Um, but it's fortified to a point where it's pretty, you know, pretty alcoholic. Usually around twenty percent, and let's see, this one is twenty percent. Um, so, um, and and, and the the um, fortification uh, helps preserve sweetness, and it also helps preserve the wine. Uh, and it's also this was particularly oxidized, so not that you can't get more oxidized on it when we're not talking sherry. Um, but um, it, it, this 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 bottle will last more than a few days now that I've un uncorked it. Unfortunately, I'm going out of town for like a week and a half, so um, I can't really drink a whole lot of it between now and, and 16 hours from now. But um, I'm definitely going to enjoy as much of these wines as I can, and then put the corks in and put them in the fridge to help you know help uh, slow down any extra extra oxidation and then enjoy when I get back. I need a little bit of uh, a little bit of chocolate in there. Like um like like a candy bar. Um not a Snickers. Um not an almond joy. But um something I can't remember there's like a particular candy bar that reminds me of. So what did they say to um, pair with this? Now this was a really weird pairing. They suggested dots. Oops. So you got dots. Now first of all, dots are really hard to find outside of a movie theater. I, I'll just be honest. Um, I only found these by luck because I went to Target because I was buying some stuff um, the, a couple days ago and I decided to look in their Halloween aisle to see if they had like the mixed assorted, you know, a, bag of candies and they happen to have it um i mean i looked in walgreens i looked in gas stations i looked in other little drug stores uh you know i went i actually went to the movie theater near where i work and they didn't even sell dots there like what i mean i don't eat dots um i, I prefer milk duds but um so i ended up buying uh, gummy bears which we're going to try those as a backup plan but right now if you're buying candy uh, Halloween candy. This one came in with basically a bunch of Tootsie Rolls and then dots, which was kind of weird. But um, so they say, uh, this is how they they, 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 they talk up the uh, pairing. Um, a bright nose full of fresh nuts alongside a delicate palate, dried fruit. Yeah, like like uh, like a dried plum thing. Um, uh, it is a perfect complement to the mixed fruit flavors of dots, whether your favorite is cherry, strawberry, lemon, lime, or orange. The refreshing acidity is lighter modern style of port wine makes it easy to try them all. So, I'm gonna try, I think I got like an orange one here. The problem with candies like dots and milk does take forever to eat. I can see that. Kind of interesting. Got a cherry there. Now, as a substitute, I would use some uh, gummy bears because gummy bears are way more plentiful, easier to find. Also, take as long to take forever to eat, too. Like dots. Whoops. I don't want to do too much. <clears throat> Very similar in um, flavor profile and all that. I'll try to find a no, cherry one here. It's good. I actually like the, I like the pork. The candy's cool. I won't have too much candy because if you haven't, you couldn't tell, especially since the last uh, few episodes from at least a month or so or longer ago, uh, I've actually lost uh, 35 pounds. And that's by design, trying to lose approximately 100 pounds between now and next summer. So I've been pretty successful. So I've can't, this is like the first candy I've had in a long time. Um, well, no, that's not true because I went to go see 
um, Blade Runner a week ago and had some milk duds. But until then, I haven't had candy in a long time. And I got a stupid amount of candy. So I don't want to, like, eat it all. But I'm gonna probably going to eat it. Because I'm on vacation, just so you know. I like I like this wine a lot. I mean, it's uh, what was it, twenty six dollars for a, a three quarter bottle. I mean, you're not gonna like slam down six ounces or anything like that, but it's pretty good. All right, let's move on to wine number two. I do that so I know where to put the the curtain thing. All right, because um, I don't I don't actually cut just so you know. Um, I just keep it going. All right, so wine number two. Uh, this is the Dow's, and let's get all the paperwork going here. The Dow's 2011 LBV, also known as Late Bottle Vintage, Late Bottled Vintage Port. Now this is uh, technically a ruby port that has seen some oak aging, and what happens is they're like, well, we don't really think it's a vintage but it was pretty good quality grapes, or at least good enough, and we kind of want to make some money. So we're going to put it out a little bit earlier than a vintage port, because you're not going to necessarily put out vintage ports this quickly, but I mean, it's only six years. I mean, you could, I guess. Um, but um, but they want to make some money, basically. So, um, and I can't remember, is that, uh, I think Taylor is the, the people that are mostly attributed to um, putting out LBV. Just so you know, uh, 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 Pratt and Simington uh, own most of the port houses. Um, anyway, so um, let's talk about this one. Boom, boom, boom. And this is a 99 point. Let's see, by Wine Spectre, number one wine of 2014. All right, um, it is suggested retail price of $24.99. Um, nice, so in their little, little blurb here. It says, unlike many port shippers, it is only in occasional rare years of exceptional quality that Dow's releases an LBV, uh, which is why we believe that our wine stands out well above any alternative. Um, it is a single harvest wine, uh, primarily from a declared vintage port in that in order to show their true potential, LBVs require a long mat maturation period in seasoned oak casks. Further, uh, following further bottle aging prior to its release, this means that the wine reaches you absolutely ready for drinking. And this is kind of a funny little thing. Since it's spent so long, has spent so long quietly developing in barrel, it will no longer throw, throw a sediment if we drunk with no need for decanting. Just pull the cork. Okay, the bottom of the page, decanting. Stand the bottle upright 20 to 30 minutes where you intend to decant. Blah, 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 blah. Once you have started pouring, do not stop until you see the very first traces of sediment. You may prefer to use a decanting funnel, funnel with a filter, but you say I don't have to decant it. Anyway, I, I'm sure it's just a generic thing they put on all their all their tech sheets about decanting, which is one reason to decant is to prevent sediment. The other reason is to open up wine. Um, uh, barrel age is four to six years on it. Um, I don't know, does it say say anything on the on the uh, wares? No. Uh, and it goes fermentation with natural yeast between 25. Uh, once, blah, 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 blah. No, no, it doesn't say anything about anything like that. Anyway, back to Dallas. So let's check this out. So, as you can see, it's more of a purple color that gives you the indication that this is a ruby port, not a tawny port, even though it did age in barrel for a little bit. Um, so that great purpley, grape, grapey uh, color there. And um, doo -doo -doo. bam, bam, and bam. Uh, <clears throat> they suggest Kit Kats, um, which I'll just read the little thing. Uh, Dow's trademark dryer style comes through making the wine, making this wine a perfect pairing with the candy's crispy wafer and smooth milk chocolate. Unlike other porthouses, Dow's only produces LBV from, better year, from the best years. Uh, yada yada. So, Kit Kats. Uh, these are one of my favorite candy bars. So I was excited, like, heck yeah. I get to have a Kit Kat. Was it, give me a break, give me a break, give me a break of that Kit Kat bar? Yeah. 
Oh, I was supposed to try to wine first. Oh well. Alright. I was excited about having a kick hit bar. So, I mean, I can really smell the alcohol. I mean, it's 20, well, let's we'll see, is it 20% or more? Let's see here. Thank goodness I'm wearing my glasses. I'm trying to wear my contacts again, which you haven't seen on camera in a long time, but I have to have readers, which sucks. 19.5. Um, they're great, and I have like the ones that go click, click, um, and then I have like other ones that like just put in your nose and all that. This is, I've just been experimenting with them the past week, but um, anyway, enough of that. So, um, lots of plum really coming through. Uh, almost prunish and there's like this um, well besides the alcohol it, it's like a, like a cinnamon like a red hot um, type of aroma coming through too and that this is like it's kind of also like the heat of the alcohol is giving you that, that impression of like a like a, a cinnamon candy Really? Wow, I've got 21 minutes already. I guess I had an intro which was long. Hmm. While it's effectively the same strength is that one it tastes like way stronger um like the alcohol is really coming through i probably should be spitting on these because i'm already starting to feel it because i didn't really have a big dinner on the way home and i've already had two glasses of wine while i was eating my my uh, burger i know i know i'm supposed to be on a diet but again i'm on vacation so i'm um having a good earlier i was good today i was really good today but anyway um whew. Yeah, it, it really feels like it's a more powerful wine as far as the alcohol. Um, they talk about black currant plum, hints of violets. I get that, yeah. And cigar box, I kind of get that too. I'm going to spit the rest of the way because I don't want to get schnockered. Um, and then it talks about um, tannins hold on into a long and spicy peppery finish blah 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 I'm not saying no, I maybe like a peppery but maybe peppermint oh I got like a maple syrup thing out of that just now I mean really I think the alcohol is starting to kind of tame down a little bit after aerating it Yeah, oh wow, that's like amazing. It's like, you know, that like a maple syrup and you're about to have like French toast or waffles or pancakes, maybe like blue blueberry pancakes with syrup. That's what it is. Oh my goodness. I, I just want to smell it now. Let's taste it, see how it, see how it tastes. All right, I've got basically the same. Let's, let's gotta get this candy here. Mm. Retro nasally, I'm getting like enhancement of the wafers. That's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. I like that a lot. Oh, man. I still got three more things of, of Kit Kat to do. All right. Really good. I like it a lot. Oh my goodness. I don't want to get drunk. All right. <clears throat> Not getting drunk. Let's move on to wine number three. Bam. All right. So this, my friends, is... Ta-da! The Cockburn's Special Reserve Port. 
So we're going from the most complex to basically the least complex um, in wine, but body-wise, it's probably the fullest or biggest of the wines. Um, so let's see here. Cockburns was founded in 1815 by Robert, Co Robert Cockburn from Scotland, or of Scottish origins. I mean, I didn't from Scotland. Um, in 2010, they celebrated their 195th birthday, uh, and they joined Symington Family Estates. Oh, what do you know? Uh, Symington and Taylor are separate estates. I think I made an assumption. I think they are. Dang it. I'm not going to look it up. Um, Symington and Taylor, I think, like, are, are the two big ones. But Taylor owns a crap ton of port houses. Um... Reverting to family ownership after an interlude of 48 years, being, after being bought by Symington. Uh, in the Upper Dura Valley, Quinta do Canet is Cockburn's premier vineyard, whose wines form the backbone of its famed vintage ports. Known for its innovative vineyard practices, Cockburn's was instrumental in promoting and conserving the indigenous Toriga Nacional grape varietal. All right, um, in 1969, Cockburn's created the reserve category to meet the opportunity between vintage and standard ruby ports. It is a superior blend of wines selected for their richness and concentration from the finest vineyards in the upper Duro. I have to do that every year for some stupid reason. And matured in oak casks in four to five, for four to five years. Uh, the style is luscious. Red, uh, yeah, it says red cherry fruit, mellow cask, finished tones. And an attractive one or something. Yeah, okay, whatever. All right, so... Um, it says shelf life after opening six to eight weeks. Thank you very much for putting that in there. Um, I mean, I had some, the, the ports I had, they were stretching that eight week part and you could start telling they were starting to get a little bit long in the tooth. Um, and I had them like sitting out here on the table. So they were not in ideal conditions. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Decanty, no need to decant it says. Um, which is, that should be right. Okay, uh, drinking status. This, 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 it's good to bring this up. Uh, reserve ruby ports are aged and finished in oak barrels. Once they are bottled, they are ready to drink and will see no benefit from bottle aging. That's something to realize, especially with like ruby ports. So once they're bottled, that's it. I mean, there's no vintage on it. There's, I mean, there might, you might have some type of indication or code to tell you when it was bottled. Um, but that's about it. It's not going to benefit from sitting in a bottle any longer. I mean, you know, drink it. Uh, suggested retail price is $18. Um, let's taste this first, and then we'll do the uh, candy pairing. So... Um, it's... Definitely plum. Prune. More prune-like than plum. Of course, alcohol. I can see. Uh, let's see what the alcohol in this is. Looks like it's 19.5. Also, I mean, I guess you know what I get. I get like cherry cough syrup because you get the cherry and the alcohol and that like bright, yeah, like super bright cherry. This says bright cherry, bright red cherry fruit, but yeah. Um, like cherry cough syrup. Yeah. A bit of cotton ball too. It's probably the ethanol, the alcohol, rubbing alcohol and associating it with cotton balls. That's really probably where I'm getting that from. It's a ruby port. I mean, it's pretty alcoholic. To me, the alcohol kind of dominates everything, and the cherries there. It's not like cough syrup, um, but it's it's a very cherry dominant um, flavor. I really prefer the other two better. Um, they're just a smoother, more uh, a higher quality wine. 
I mean, that's just the reality of it. I mean, I guess I would have normally done it in reverse order, but I was kind of going from lighter to fuller body. Uh, did I mention? Yeah, I already did. Eighteen dollars. It's just an abundance of cherries. It's all right. All right, let's try it with a Butterfinger. That's what they suggested with this one. So let's see here. It's not Halloween without the crispity, crunchity, peanut buttery taste of Butterfinger. And we can think of no better wine, blah, blah, blah. A luscious style of port bursting with bright red cherry fruit and Cockburn's signature mellow cask finished tones enhancing its smoothness. Make for a devil, devilish, devilish, devilishly delicious pairing as the creamy milk chocolate base gives way to peanut. All right. I like the butterfinger. Man, it's been so long since I had a butterfinger. But I can only like have one. I can't like eat a ton of them. Mm. I like that pairing because you got the peanut butter and kind of nutty character along with this cherry and, and, and now more the plum and prune um, combination. I like it. Now, I'm going to do the obvious pairing to me. The tawny with the Butterfinger. Nuts and nuts, right? Who, do, who doesn't want more nuts in their mouth? Whoa! I gotta say that at least once every couple of years. All right. This is an adult show. It's not for kids. All right. Reset the palette. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be good. I like that parent a lot. Now, I wouldn't pair the dots really with anything. I mean, it was, if you're gonna pair it, I guess the tawny port's the best because it's the lightest one. But I want to see how the dots pair with the um, the ruby, the vintage ruby. Well, not the vintage ruby, but the reserve ruby. Uh, yep, uh, the lemon is probably not the best choice for that. I guess orange. Let me do that. If I should try to find a cherry one. That would be killer right there. There we go. Right. <clears throat> Cherry dots. Mmm. You ready for this one? Oh my goodness, it was like this cherry explosion. That was pretty amazing. Kick out with the LBV, I mean, that's just, it is what it is. 
That's what I would have done. I would have put the, the dots with that. It was like a like a cherry red hot. Oh, that was good. That was really good. All right. I told my daddy he wasn't allowed to uh, touch the dots until I got this episode done. All right, so I was going to do this, do it for tonight's episode. Um, I love doing this episode. I get to dress up a little bit. I mean, it's the same costume every year. Um, but I get to have new, different theme music. Think, think about that. Somebody hated my theme music. You know what? Here's the deal. I'm not a professional Hollywood thing. I like techno and trance music and funk and all that kind of stuff. And I had Mark Blasco, um, who's created uh, podcast music for a lot of the Twit This Week in, Te- this Week in Tech um, episodes or, or shows. I had him create mine because um, I like his, his, he's very creative. He does lots of musical styles. I like mine. It's a mixture of funk and um, techno with a little bit of just other, other uh, qualities. Um, it's also somewhat based upon my outro music. I told him to take the outro music and combine it with um, the actual twit um, uh, intro music. And um, I think I even told him to throw in a little bit of security now uh, on that, which is probably my favorite podcast, even though it's not about wine. Um, but, uh, yeah, the guy was like, basically told me my music sucked. And you know what? It, it, if it does, it does. But I like it, and um, I'm not changing it. Not every theme song is the best, but I get it. If I was going to take this like seriously, seriously, I, maybe I would change it to something that's not as techno or trance. Not trance, techno driven. But hey, that's the kind of music I like. All right, um, that is going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, click the click the links above to frame me up. Click the links above, below to uh, find out more about the wines here. Um, maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll put links about the candy, I guess. I don't know. Um, hit the donate button over there, PayPal, and um, that's going to do it. We'll see everyone again next time. And be sure to watch, be stay tuned for all the Burgundy episodes because I got some cool ones that are probably coming up. I haven't done the interviews yet, but I got a really cool one coming up. I sure all going to be cool. Just watch them. Later.